My name is Lawrence Brom. I'm an international lawyer, political economist, and I am an international fellow with the Center for China and Globalization. My Chinese name is Long Anzhi. I came to China in 1981. In the 1980s as a lawyer, I brought a lot of foreign investors, major multinational corporations into China. By the mid-1990s, I was really serving as an advisor to much of the leadership on state-owned enterprise reforms. Then I led the drafting work um, within the Ministry of Environmental Protection. And I think if you look back at these sort of major threshold moments of change in China, one of them was the massive transformation of the state-owned enterprises and pushed China from planning to the market. Every time you restructured a state-owned enterprise, the government was addressing the fundamental issues of people's livelihood because it involved not only restructuring an enterprise and turning it into a corporation, it involved addressing issues of health care, pension, housing, in turn finance for housing, health care, pension. All of these aspects affected the individual lives of people across China. The second epical change was the policy of ecological civilization. Because prior to the first draft of the policy in 2013, China was 80% dependent on coal, the most polluting resource. And in 2018, an ecological civilization as a national policy, it was actually written into the Communist Party constitution, making the Communist Party the most green of all the green parties, in fact. And so with that fundamental change now, by 2050, China will be 80% green energy. There's never been any conceivable transformation like this taking place within all the countries right now. We really have seen a massive transformation within only four decades of an economy that has gone from scarcity to surplus. When I came here in 1981, if we wanted to eat grain, eat, eat some biscuit or bread, you had to have a, uh, what they call liang piao, or a quota um, certificate allowing you to actually buy staples. Now, of course, you have every kind of food, every kind of restaurant, every single brand in the world is here. You have a plethora of commodities. That says a lot, not just about reform and opening as a policy, but about people's livelihood, tastes, and the way they're seeing the world and seeing themselves. In many ways, people look at China's opening reform and they go, oh, you know, China's become the factory of the world. It's manufactured a lot of cheap products. But it doesn't stop there. It has integrated China with the rest of the world. Now, the future will be China being the investor in the world and the producer of renewable energy solutions that will be exported everywhere. So in this respect, China has gone outbound with its investment rather than inbound. It is also, in many ways, allowing Western culture, international ideas to come to China in a way it's never happened before. And in turn, Chinese culture is spreading out. We can see even in Western countries, anywhere, you can see martial arts being practiced. You can see people drinking tea. You have actually an enormous amount of connectivity that's going on people to people, culture to culture. And I think more of that will bring our world closer together. And in the future, I hope there's less barriers dividing all of us.